It's hard to believe it's been one year since we moved from Arizona to a secluded part of the woods in the Midwest. When we made the decision to move, we knew we wanted to get some land, build a homestead, and grow our own food. It was just after COVID hit when we started planning our move and looking for properties. When we found this one, we both knew it was the home for us and would be the start of a new beginning. And that's what I really want to accomplish out here is just getting back to the basics. I don't have an extravagant house. It's a very cottage-like feel, uh, which is perfect for my husband and I and my daughter when she comes to visit us from college. And uh, just a great, great place to build our home, uh, to be happy, to feel more freedom, and uh, to just reconnect with nature and really get back in that harmony that I know many of us have gotten so far away from the harmony of living, uh, coexisting really with nature. And we are nature. We are nature. Humans are nature. Um, so it's in our DNA to live this way. And we've just gotten so far remo removed from that. And coming back to that has been um, a huge, huge awakening for me. Um, and I, it's really just awakened so much within me on a soul level and made me realize that this is it. This is, this is all we need. There's a bird that just flew in the tree next to me <laughs> as I said that because it knows and it's all of it is waiting for us to realize this and come back to it. And when you do, like literally magical things start happening around you and in your life. I, I can't even begin to explain and clearly I'm starting to even get emotional talking about it because it means that much to me. Um, and I've really felt the difference in my life since I have gone more in this direction. So I'm really excited about growing some food again and um, not having to rely on um, purchasing these items from stores that who's to say that that stuff is always going to be available. Uh, it's really important that we actually learn how to do these things for ourselves, how to make our own food, to know where it come from, comes from. And um, I, I just can't begin to explain how excited I am about that opportunity here. We moved in at the end of July in 2020. We had a few projects around the house that we needed to take care of first, but after that, it was time to turn our focus outdoors. And this is where the greenhouse is going, uh, which is going to be arriving here in mid-November. So the greenhouse will be going here, which is where majority of the sun comes in. Um, a creek lies behind that, that runs through the rest of our property below. And this is all of ours as well. We like to keep uh, some, a good majority of our property untouched, wild. Um, there's a lot of animals that live here, a lot of nature spirits that live here, fairies. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we provide a good environment for them to thrive as well because when we work in harmony with a lot of the animals and nature spirits here, they will in turn produce great abundance to us as well. So all of this back here, eventually, if you can see over beyond the trees here, there's more clearing and that is where hopefully we will intend on having uh, maybe a couple goats and potentially doing more gardening in that area as well. Um, but for now, this will all be untouched. However, I will probably end up growing some uh, fruit trees and berry bushes throughout this area.
and up closer to the house, I will have uh, chickens. We have our chicken coop, the materials that will be arriving in mid-October, which by the way, given the current pandemic, uh, there's been a lot of lack of materials, building materials. So I had to order that stuff quickly because the prices were already starting to go up and a lot of that stuff is going to be in scarcity soon. So I'm glad that we were able to get our order in for these items, but we will have a chicken coop over here, uh, which will produce a lot of some, a lot of good shade, but also sun for them as well as back here some composting piles that I will be building using wooden pallets um, and just the brush from the land uh, yard waste uh, as well as some manure that we'll be getting from the chickens and um, this is what I will be working on over the next several months this fall into winter I had been researching for months about permaculture design and regenerative farming, so I knew that's what I wanted to build here, an organic food forest. Not use any chemicals, pesticides, or herbicides, and instead create a system that works with nature, not against it. The first thing I started to work on was building the foundation for my garden, which begins with good nutrient-rich soil. So this is not the most glamorous video uh, since I am actually working out in the lawn today, uh, working on this uh, food forest that I'm starting to build. And you can see behind me, uh, this is the mulch I've been laying down. I have a lot, a lot of area to cover as you can see. So um, I'm working hard this whole entire week, uh, but it's coming along and it's getting there. here I have it roped off the area that we plan on using as majority of this food forest and this is what I've done in just a few days time so as you can see it's not nearly enough yet there's still a lot of work to do so there's gonna be days ahead of me doing a lot of this work some of the poles have since fallen down, but I generally have it roped off to give me a rough idea as to the area that I'm working within. But this is what I've laid out. And this has about at least four, six or so inches of wood chips. I've been laying down builder's paper first over the grass and then layers of the wood chips. And what that will do is create nice rich soil underneath. It'll give fungi and healthy bacteria a chance to grow, which will actually create wonderful, beautiful soil for us that will be rich come time in the spring for when I start growing um, these vegetables and fruit trees, berry bushes, uh, which is what will be grown here.
We then started to build our compost bins using pellet boards and began to fill those with brush from the land and food scraps. We knew we wanted chickens on our homestead, not only because they make great farm companions, but my husband loves their eggs and I knew I could use their manure for composting. They also help us with natural pest control and I love having them in the garden with me, except for when they start eating my kale. We got our cedar chicken coop from Roost and Root, which was pretty easy to put together. They have a great video on YouTube on how to build it. We wanted to extend their coop to give them more room, so we added a run to their coop. We built that ourselves using wood and hardware cloth. How do you feel? Oh my God, relieved. So relieved. This took days to do when it shouldn't have, but so many issues that we ran into, but it's done. Woo! Chickens have like an amazing home now, lots of space, and everything is pretty much predator proof. And all I have to do is just put the uh, hardware cloth along the bottom and bury that, uh, but other than that, this is done. Woo! To keep predators out, we set up a solar-powered electric fence around the perimeter of the coop. With the garden fence now in place, winter was starting to settle in, so we got our greenhouse just in time. I ordered it shortly after we moved in, but because of COVID and a shortage of supplies, we didn't get our greenhouse until November. It was already starting to snow by then, but I was relieved that it finally arrived. Do you mind helping me open this door? <laughs> Thank you. There's so much to carry right now to put these shelves up. But it's coming along. Look at this. Let me see on this side. Yeah, right. All right, that should do it. Okay. We had a brutal winter. 
with frigid cold temperatures and so much snow. All I could do was plan for the spring growing season and start designing the layout of my garden. I also stocked up on seeds. Signs of life finally started to appear and I couldn't wait to get into my greenhouse and start planting seeds. It really made those last few weeks of the stark gray winter more bearable as the season slowly came to an end. You can really start to feel a shift in energy when spring arrives. Everything starts to come back to life. Color reappears. The birds start to sing again as nature takes its first breath into a new cycle. I ordered compost to start building out my garden beds and prepared for transplanting these precious seedlings into the garden. I couldn't have been more excited to see that truck roll down my driveway. The next project on the homestead was creating another water source instead of solely relying on the water deliveries we were getting every month. We have a well here, but it's shallow and doesn't supply enough water for our family, so we have to have our cistern filled each month with city water. We decided to purchase rainwater tanks so that we could start harvesting rainwater. We purchased two for the house and one near the greenhouse. I later purchased another to keep in the garden. I started transplanting the starts and sowing more seeds using the moon and planetary phases as my guide for determining when to plant above grounders, below grounders, and flowers. I believe that the moon, sun, planets, and stars influence the earth, the animals, the ocean, and our human bodies, mood, and minds. We are part of the cosmos just as much as we are part of this planet earth. It is all connected. We are all connected. There is something so pure and beautiful about watching a seed you planted begin to emerge from the earth and grow into a living plant. It's impossible not to feel a connection to that plant, not to want to nurture it and help it thrive. When I started gardening and spending more time in nature, that connection got deeper and deeper. I began to see the world differently and felt a release of heaviness. The weight of the world can feel so heavy when you are immersed in society and the cultures that have been a part of us for so long. The pressure to fit in, belong, accomplish, succeed, and simply survive. Along the way, we lose the essence of who we truly are, spiritual and natural beings. Nature has an amazing way of reminding us of this, bringing us back to a place of peace, harmony, compassion, and the cyclical rhythm of death and rebirth, light and dark, and the understanding that there is no difference between the two. 
both exist and have a place here and within us. The days got warmer and the gardens grew. It's hard to believe that just a year ago, we were only envisioning what we were going to build here, taking small steps to turn that vision into a reality. Sometimes when we think about starting something new or creating something that feels so big, we talk ourselves out of it and give up before we even start. When you feel passionately about an idea or have a vision for creating something new, such as building a homestead and a new way of living or being, taking the first step, any step in that direction, sends a message to the universe that you are ready for a new beginning, a new journey. There is so much that we still have yet to learn, but the fact that we are doing it and have created this much in a year's time brings so much joy into our lives. These past couple weeks, I have been able to pause and simply observe it all. These are really big. (laughs) There is nothing we can't do as the amazing creator beings that we are. We are powerful and can collectively create a better world and a better life. It all begins with a dream, some faith, and a lot of love.